Welcome back to Michiana Main Lines. Today we're going to be doing a deep dive on the Elkhart and Western uh, Rail history, but particularly the abandoned portion west of uh, current road to the end of the line and kind of focusing on the period of the 80s when uh, Conrail still operated it. That was milepost 9.8 to 12.9. Here's an overview map of uh, the uh, ENW, and uh, it's important to note now uh, we're dealing with the abandoned portion, but the eastern portion uh, is alive and well. In fact, uh, it has been recently purchased by a new company, and uh, a grant has been received, and uh, things are going well, but we're looking at the uh, abandoned portion. But uh, here's a kind of a history of, of the entire line. It was built in 1893. It was kind of the uh, north side of Mishawaka and Elkhart's answer to being bypassed by the main east-west line to the south. So they built this line. In 1898, the Lakeshore and Michigan Southern leased it. In 1915, New York Central purchased it. And then the uh, normal progression of Penn Central in 1968, 1976 Conrail. And then the uh, line was abandoned in 86 from 9.8 to 12.9. And the uh, uh, portion that connected, which we'll see here uh, in a, a little bit later, that connected with Grand Trunk was abandoned in 1984. But then in 1996, Michigan Southern leased it. So now we'll take a more detailed look here. We're going to be focusing on the part of this line in red, which was west of Twin Branch Junction. Uh, we've got too much to talk about today, so we'll, we'll do a separate video on Twin Branch. Uh, but basically, you see all of the uh, sightings that were on this line as it progressed westward into Mishawaka. And then you see the abandoned 1984 portion, which was used to... Uh, mostly interchange with uh, Grand Trunk and Western from uh, what I could tell. Here's a look at the uh, Conrail ZTS map of our first uh, companies that we're going to talk about. Uh, starting west of US-20, uh, there was the uh, Champion Building. In the center was uh, Wick Slumber, uh, just to the east of Elder Road. And just to the west of Elder Road was uh, Michiana Warehouse. First picture we have was in 1984 from Jeff Strombeck. This was uh, McKinley Highway and what the crossing looked like at that time with uh, uh, overhead crossing signals. This, of course, is a modern uh, four-lane highway today. Here we get an overview now of those buildings again. The Champion Building to the right, the uh, Wick Slumber in the middle, and the uh, uh, Michiana Warehouse over uh, to the left. These are under different ownerships now, but that kind of roughly shows where the line came through and uh, kind of put in uh, roughly the spurs, but uh, not sure on exact uh, placement of those. Here was uh, uh, Elder Road looking east. You can see a boxcar sitting out there. That probably was a car either out of or destined for uh, Wick Slumber. That was when freight was still going in there in the 80s. The other side of Elder Road looking west, you see the uh, Michiana Warehouse complex over to the right and the uh, spur that served it. Uh, in the uh, far distance, you can kind of see a switch here with a siding going off to the left that went to the uh, Montgomery Wards Warehouse, which we'll be talking about here shortly. Another look at this uh, spur here just to the west of uh, Elder Road. This was when service was pulled back uh, to Elder Road. You can see the stop sign there at the end of the track. Uh, even though the uh, line was abandoned in 86, uh, service was actually gradually pared back uh, through the 80s. I believe first uh, Uniroyal uh, went and then they still serve the uh, uh, Owens Corning, and then this was the uh, final pullback before the uh, line was abandoned. Uh, the interesting thing about this picture is uh, the way they have that stop sign right at the end of the switch. It almost looks like nothing was going into Michiana Warehouse already at this time because they didn't leave any room to maneuver cars, but yet that switch seems in very good condition, and it even looks like it was brushed off from the snow, so that's just kind of a... Uh, bit of a question mark about it. 
now a look at our next uh, group of pictures. Again, the uh, Montgomery Warehouse, uh, Montgomery Ward Warehouse to the right. I always thought that was Ristance Wire, but they've got it marked as Montgomery Ward. We had Cordell Industries at Clover Road, and of course the uh, Owens Corning Fiberglass, which was pretty large at uh, Burkett and Jefferson. There was also an Indiana Bell Spur, uh, just east of the Y and east of Merrifield. And then the Rosenstein, or Rosenstein, I apologize if I'm mispronouncing, uh, down at uh, Cedar Street. And uh, these CDS maps, what these basically were, were maps that Conrail used to instruct the uh, switch crews on uh, where to spot cars and such. Like certain loads needed to go at certain docks. And these aren't to scale, they're kind of exploded, but they do have a lot of detail. Like if we look at this Montgomery Ward, you'll see these uh, four symbols here with circles and lines that indicates uh, four loading docks. If we look at the Rosenstein and Sun, you'll see one of those for one uh, loading dock. So kind of remember that. Here's another overview of those uh, buildings uh, now. Uh, and the way things look now, of course, buildings are under different ownership. But uh, the Montgomery Wards, that building has since been uh, added on to, so the siding actually would have been kind of right in the middle of the building now. And then we see the uh, spur to Cordell. Here's a look at that uh, Montgomery Wards warehouse uh, at the time. And again, remember the four loading docks, and by golly, there we see, count them, one, two, three, four loading docks. Uh, this was not being used at this time already, which uh, was probably sometime in the mid to late 80s. Here's uh, a look at the uh, switch for Cordell Industries. This would have just been east of Clover Road, another Jeff Strombeck uh, photo. Uh, and uh, they took a series of pictures. I think this was shortly before the track was going to be pulled in this area. So they took a lot of the pictures to uh, document uh, the way the track was laid out. Here's a closer look at that Cordell Spur. Uh, a bit of a question mark about this photo is uh, you see a tank car uh, down the line there uh, next to the building. Uh, some believe that that was a marooned car. Now, I'm not sure about that because if you do look at the rails here close, you kind of do see evidence of flangeways being cut. The rails kind of open. It appears something was still coming in and out when this picture was taken. But, of course, a car could have still been spotted on top of that one. So whether it was marooned or not, that's a bit of a mystery. Next up now, we see another overview here of kind of the, the way things are now. The Owens Corning Fiberglass Complex to the right, the Rosenstein Warehouse to the left at Cedar, and kind of just a, a overlay of the way the uh, track was laid out. You kind of get a good look at the, where that Y was, just east of uh, Merrifield. Here's the Owens Corning at Fur and Jefferson. This is what uh, their siding uh, looked like. Uh, they had the two spurs here that went in into their complex. And of course, the uh, main line, uh, e E&W industrial track over to the right. Closer look at the uh, Owens Corning uh, uh, dock area, uh, one of their docks with uh, boxcars uh, still spotted at that time. This was a uh, Dr. Lewis Marr uh, old photograph, again Burkett and Jefferson. It says fur because Burkett does become fur at some point up uh, north of here. But a good look at a New York Central train uh, westbound. Here we have a 75 uh, John Strombeck photo again. This was Mishawaka Avenue where the uh, line crossed heading uh, towards Cedar. And uh, this is a great shot. Uh, Penn Central uh, backing down, probably heading uh, to Uniroyal uh, to do switching. Uh, a new house actually occupies the area where this uh, photo was taken. But the grade can still be seen uh, on the other side of Mishawaka Avenue. 
Here's a good look at that Rosenstein warehouse, and uh, again, the, the single dock, as the uh, ZTS map uh, showed. Uh, from here, the line progressed westward through the Central Park area and uh, to the river. Here's another look right at that same area and how farly different it looks uh, now from what it did then. This is now the entrance to a hospice as well as uh, Central Park. Now here's an overview of the uh, bridges over the St. Joe River, actually two bridges, one that crossed the river and one that crossed the uh, race on a curve. This is not exact placement, but the important thing to uh, get out of this is that the uh, current uh, footbridge now is not where the uh, rail bridge went through. It's an entirely new bridge and an entirely different alignment, but this just gives kind of a rough idea uh, of how the track kind of laid out and it, it at that time then went westward and uh, went kind of along Front Street just to the north of it. Another interesting thing about this is on the uh, bridge over the St. Joe River there was a switch on it wh which uh, was the spur that went to the uh, Uniroyal powerhouse which was uh, located up in here. So that's kind of a cool thing we'll be seeing that switch on the bridge. Here's a Strombach view from 84 uh, looking uh, west from Pine. You see there was kind of a broad curve before the uh, uh, track did uh, cross the river. But that's a good view of it uh, there heading uh, uh, westward. Here's another uh, a view of the bridge here now in uh, more modern times. Uh, the railing which you will see in, in some of the other shots uh, was gone here, on, only a, a railing on the uh, right or the north side. Here's a good look at the smaller bridge that crossed the race on a curve. Down in the uh, far distance uh, uh, would be Main Street. Over to the right somewhere is where the uh, spur to the powerhouse would have uh, uh, went uh, in. Jeff Strombeck, 1976, good look at a uh, Conrail train uh, crossing the bridge with uh, coal hoppers and, and other miscellaneous freight. And you see the uh, railing uh, in place on uh, the side of the bridge. Good look at that switch on the bridge. This of course was uh, looking east, you see the dam to the right. and. Uh, this was already when uh, traffic had stopped uh, going into Uniroyal, as you can tell by the uh, solid uh, rust. 1984 Jeff Strombeck. Uh, not sure if they were working on the railing at this point because in the early 80s Conrail wanted to abandon service to uh, Uniroyal, stating that the uh, bridge was unsafe for fo fully uh, loaded uh, freight cars to pass over anymore, let alone an engine. But a compromise was reached between Uniroyal and Conrail to split the cost and uh, keep the line open for a few more years, which they did. And this could have possibly had something to do with one of those repairs. But ultimately service ended and that was the end of the story. Here's another good look at that switch on the bridge and uh, Penn Central uh, switching uh, coal hoppers uh, out of that uh, siding from the uh, loading dock. There you get a good look at that uh, railing and uh, walkway on, uh, well, railing on one side and, and uh, actual kind of walkway on the other side. Now this is just kind of a general overview now of the whole uh, Uniroyal plant area. Uh, the big plant area, it, it, it's, all, it's all open uh, now uh, with, with uh, no sign of anything, buildings or the, the, a track for sure, uh, no sign of anything. This is kind of an old but blurry, but it kind of uh, gives the idea, an old Sanborn uh, map from way back, just showing the amount of trackage that was in the uh, Uniroyal complex. We won't try to break down or decipher all of that, but there was quite a bit. So that was pretty much probably one of the crown jewels of the line, if, if not the crown jewel. 
Getting back to the ZTS, this is a detailed look at a track that was still active in Uniroyal in uh, May of 1985. Uh, again, uh, over to the right, you see the uh, spur that went into the power plant river after crossing the river. Kind of uh, a neat uh, uh, crossover uh, area of track, as well as other track going into the plant. I tried to uh, label the uh, building numbers as best I could glean off of the ZTS map, but some of these may not be totally correct, but uh, it gives the idea of the amount of track that was still in there even in, in the 80s. And uh, this building uh, 133 that shows uh, three docks, I think we'll see a picture of shortly. Not totally sure, but it matches up, so I'm thinking that might be it. Here's the first picture from Jeff Strombeck, 1982. This was uh, looking uh, westward, and uh, you can see Main Street crossing here in the distance, and then uh, Front Street here with the track uh, going uh, just to the north of it. A look at that same area basically today. You kind of uh, see how greatly things have changed, and once again, no trace that a track ever came through here anymore now. Another Jeff Strombeck, 1981, a good view right along uh, Front Street, I believe, with the two tracks uh, that were there, and uh, Conrail uh, still switching. Here's a look at that building I believe we saw on the ZTS with the three docks, uh, this uh, being after uh, service uh, to the plant had ended but I believe that's building 133, but I won't make no guarantees. Kind of blurry, I didn't have time to uh, focus this one better, but just to look at the uh, track just before removal, again along uh, Front Street, and you kind of get an idea of the uh, multitude of track that was uh, still in the complex. This was a, a look on June 16, 2000 from the, from the South Bend Tribune, just uh, the day before the uh, implosion with, which uh, brought down the remaining buildings of the complex. And uh, this is kind of neat because it kind of shows a, a pretty good view of the uh, powerhouse and smokestack still at that time. But uh, no trace of any uh, uh, track at all that I can see here anymore uh, in 2000. Now, even though this track was already long gone during the uh, days of Conrail, it still did go westward to the Cam Brewery, so I just wanted to take a brief look at that. This was the old Sanborn map of the uh, Cam and uh, Schellinger Brewing Company, kind of showing the track that went in there. Uh, two spurs, uh, kind of splitting uh, the two buildings. Looking on the overview of what we now know as the 100 center complex, I kind of drew in here roughly where, where those tracks probably went in right between the two buildings, just kind of uh, making a guesstimate for fun. And here's a close-up shot again, kind of where, where uh, the track uh, probably went through. Every time I was there, I always thought that that looked like an area where a track went through. So just kind of for grins and giggles. We'll kind of uh, imagine the way things were. Now, finally, we need to take a l little bit of a look at least at the uh, uh, Grand Trunk uh, Western connection that uh, went uh, westward from the Y at Merrifield and uh, crossed Willow and crossed Cedar and then went on to uh, cross division and connect with the Grand Trunk. I believe it was pretty much used for uh, interchange. And again, that was abandoned in 1984. But we do have, have a shot of some activity on or near it. Again, thanks to Jeff Strombeck, 1975, there's a good look at that Y just east of Merrifield with a uh, Penn Central train uh, negotiating it, either heading westward uh, to do something at Grand Trunk or just uh, uh, positioning to go through the Y and either uh, 
head back uh, west uh, to Elkhart or head down to uh, Uniroyal. And that pretty much brings us to the end of this video. I think we took up enough of your time and talked enough, but if you're hungry for more is history on the ENW, the uh, Elkhart Model Railroad Club has uh, something on it at their uh, site there at emrrc.com and also uh, the uh, Monon uh, history site at monon.org has a few more pictures and some talk about it. So as I mentioned, uh, there will be a video on Twin Branch. I haven't decided about the uh, eastern part of the ENW, though it would be interesting to kind of look at the differences between Conrail's operation of it and, and the, uh, the way things have changed today. Some new customers, some customers gone. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Like, subscribe, or leave any comments and or questions. Just try to keep it clean. And we'll try to do a better job of uh, getting back with anybody uh, that does leave a comment. So anyway, take care. We'll see you down the line.